Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I recently presented our embarrassed summer outlook on the ERCOT market, and I'm excited to take you behind the scenes into one of the products that helps me build my view on these markets. Previously, I presented a webinar on our integration of Muse into our Mosaic ecosystem, and today I want to share some of our newest integrations. For those of you who have not met me, I am Scott Bruns. I'm one of the writers of our ISO Flash publications, with my focus being on the ERCOT market. I'm a heavy user of our Panorama, Muse, Load and Renewable Forecast, and our PNR Price Forecast. I am the director of our awesome research team dedicated to helping our clients understand these markets through our Prism and Mosaics products. And I've been on the trade floor for over 15 years focused on thermal and renewable asset optimization. As well, my background includes proprietary asset trading with a particular interest, always having been focused on arbitrage strategy on both asset backed books, as well as a particular interest in point to point trading. I've used our PRT load and renewables forecast since the early days of my trading back when PRT was simply a set of HTML web pages. And I'm excited to show you the evolution of these load and renewable forecasts into our Mosaic ecosystem and also how we are adding ISO data into Mosaic to make our clients work workflows even more simplified. So let's jump into it. So before I show you our new integrations into Mosaic, I need to assume that not all of the folks joining us today are familiar with the current iteration of our Mosaic ecosystem. So, so let me describe some of the bells and whistles in our current tool and how I use it to write my analysis for our clients in the morning. So straight out of the box, Mosaic tends to look like this. Depending on the ISO you have subscribed to, you may have more or less information on the screen, but this is the start. Now, what you will notice, uh, what will you will notice is the drop-down buttons available, uh, which allow you to choose from our stock selection of workbook templates, or you can create your own workbooks. As well, you will see this is a modular interface that uh, gives you the ability to move panes around. On your section and you will also note that there are views that either allow you to add at a workbook level or within the individual panes. Since this is not a demo for the Mosaic e ecosystem, let me reselect my default workbook and I will uh, describe what I have selected as part of my daily uh, workbook uh, for my uh, daily routines. So the first starting up here, I have selected our map. I have turned off the uh, wind and solar resources as this tends to give me just an easier view into the market. Uh, usually these are the marginal units and I want to know exactly who's running and who's not. Then next up, uh, there is the constraints where uh, it is the last 30 days of aggregated real-time constraints with information about the flows and the ratings. Uh, next up is binding constraints, where you can see what has bound in the day ahead and the real time through the market. You also have the price matrix here, where I use this to determine uh, what, the, uh, what the potential uh, price impact of particular bindings on the market will be. During the day, you can look in any of these panes. You can look at today, tomorrow, day ahead, real time, peak weekday, off peak weekends, all of the indicators that you need, as well as the ability to go back and select this through a time range to get uh, an average of your look back potentially. It's what I use to uh, help me write the Friday look back reports. You'll also notice that I keep clicking and expanding these pages as needed with this little toggle here. We also have uh, generation available depending on your subscription level uh, where I use this to look and see uh, what are the different changes in generation day over day, uh, who is doing what from a macro perspective. 
Finally, you've also got down to the P nodes so that you can look at any sort of information that you decide that you want to carry on your screens. And then also, if you subscribe to our uh, PNR forecast, you'll have the ability to look out on congestion in the future and where we're expecting congestion to occur and not occur. So the way that I like to set up my mosaic is I usually use this side of the screen for the macro view um, and then this side of the screen uh, for my deep dives into particular areas. I like to keep up uh, the major hubs here because those are tend to be what I'm most interested in in the mornings. However, if you had interest in a particular generator and you wanted to keep information up there, based upon them, or more specifically, if you had a P node that you were interested in, uh, you could maintain that on your screen as well, just depending. So again, since I am a power user of Mosaic and I have access to all the add-ins you have, may have more or less of these panels, just depending on your needs, but I thought it would be worthwhile to show you through kind of what this tool is capable. So now that you have a more deep understanding on how those workflows come out of our Mosaic environment, let me uh, switch gears and show you some of our new additions. All right, so Pattern Recognition Technology, or PRT, was one of Inveris's first acquisitions, and the forecasts produced by PRT have been the benchmark for the third-party ISO forecasting industry for at least as long as I've been around. I kept PRT forecast up on my daily screen in my old job, which always helped me to strategize asset dispatch or find areas of risk where the ISO forecasts have a potential not to perform well. As one of the writers of our flash publications, I was really excited about the benefits of integrating these load and renewable forecasts into Mosaic as the ability to bring this all into one screen. And so here's my dashboard for the PNR uh, PRT forecast. And uh, what you'll see here from uh, the beginning is that we have the ability to display not just one forecast, uh, one forecast per chart like previously, but we now have the ability to select and choose whatever we'd like on here. And the benefit for me is that uh, I can display only what I need and only what is going to be valuable in my workday. So I have here the Inveris and the ISO load forecasts at the top, but also down at the bottom, I have the wind total and solar total for the day. If you decide you need to change any of these up, we do have tons and tons of forecasts available to set it up however you would like, as well as uh, many different metrics, including wind and solar available as well. Um, what I'm not showing here is we also have weather, if you so choose to have weather. And then we also have weather forecasted out for a number of different locations. Um, I usually find it more valuable in my workflow to, uh, to have this up rather than the, rather than the uh, weather. And so coming back down here, I have a second LNR forecast panel, which is just showing me the breakout between north and west wind and south coastal wind, which uh, these two are, uh, as everyone knows, major indicators of the system conditions going forward. These are the 14 day outlooks from the uh, PRT load and renewable forecast. And that way I can look in here during the day. We're noticing this transition to a more diurnal pattern in wind, which is typical of this time of the season. So we have to be knowledgeable of exactly when these rapid declines in winds are going to occur as generators typically have, thermal generators typically have a little trouble uh, when these uh, when these ramp offs become too hard, as well as in South Coastal, we all know that uh, once wind hits around three, three and a half gigawatts, uh, you'll notice uh, more increased binding in the valley, which is very valuable to understand if you are trying to uh, trade assets around that area. And so with this, 
Uh, this is not limited to this particular screen. Like I said, this is all a modular view. So if we went in and we added another load and renewable forecast here. Let's say I drag it, drag it over this way. And then you had some particular, I'm going to click here at random. So forgive me. If you had some particular interest in some particular uh, forecast that is available, you can add it up here. I don't know why I chose that. And then as well, if you have particular interest in weather patterns uh, in particular areas, you could have that down there. You can hide the legend, then come up here. This is where you save your workbook. If you leave this check mark on, then it's going to continuously save all of your workbooks. However, um, I like to check it on and check it off, which will save a snapshot of that forecast. So switching it up from here. Um, during the day, I consume massive, massive amounts of uh, ISO data, whether that be um, load forecast, historical information, or all of that uh, through Python. Or for me, I use our market view uh, data repository to pull in all of these information. However, uh, within the Mosaic environment, I find it valuable to have a lot of these data that aren't typically uh, scraped with a high uh, at a high speed rate, particularly the ancillary services. We're talking frequency, we're talking PRC, we're talking all of these available points. And so to that end, we've decided to add in the ISO data into, um, into our Mosaic ecosystem, which allows me the ability to come in very quickly in the morning and look at the system conditions to see if there was anything that was a system related issue, if it was a asset renewable intermittent related issue, if something underperformed uh, the day, something is overperforming the day, just all of those quick views into the market. So if you come in and you wanted to look and see, okay, what happened here on Friday, May 12th? Well, if we zoom in on Friday, May 12th, we can see that the reg up was deployed heavily across that, that evening hour. And so why was that? Why was that deployed across that evening hour? Well, you can see here up at the top that that wind generation fell rapidly in that top left corner. PRC really maintained itself, but ERCOT had to call up more generation indicated by that reg up deployment to offset some of that. We didn't really have any frequency issues, but if there was a, say, a power plant trip or something like that, you could easily see it in this historical data. You could easily see it in this historical data and then maybe even go back to our generator tab to see uh, who that might have been that made that change. And so with this integration, with this integration, this allows us the ability to begin to mix and match the data sources in Mosaic. So um, three of the screens that I typically have up, and uh, since I have multiple screens, uh, I can break out and keep these screens up um, as a monitoring source. But I like to keep uh, the valley area up just because uh, I've always been a always been a heavy, heavy user of point to points in this area. And it's uh, just a really well known volatile area. And so up here I have the uh, the map, the price map with uh, if there's any binding, you'd show that in blue. Then down here I have the uh, load and renewable forecast only for south. Uh, south region load, south region wind, just so that I can have a hover over and look at what the situation is. Also here, I keep up the ISO uh, PRC because PRC to me is always one of the very, very crucial, uh, uh, one of the very, very crucial pieces of data to keep an eye on. I also have from our uh, forecasts. I also have hub south and load zone south up here. If you, if I so chose, I could choose to pick this as a path. If you had particular interest, if you were say an LSC and needed to know if you needed to move your, uh, needed to move your uh, 
hub hub contract uh, bilateral contracts uh, to uh, the load zone or maintain it at the hub. And so you can see here real quickly that, you know, all of the upcoming congestion, if you have our PRT forecast or our PNR forecast, if you don't, then you can have them use historical view. Going back really as far as you'll probably need um, just to see what the conditions were. Up here, I have uh, the interesting thermal assets uh, down in the valley and where what they're doing. And also down on this page, I maintain uh, the common congestion point, common congestion areas. So I can just maintain and keep that up in case we notice binding similar to that. I also have the West Texas uh, interface area picked up. I also have you know, the ability to view all of that same data. We have the wind and uh, we have the load and renewable forecast from PRT. We have data coming in from our PNR price forecast, but this just kind of shows you your ability to mix and match uh, data on your screen, which I think is going to be hugely, hugely valuable. Um, so imagine if you had an asset fleet and you'd like to display information related to plants in your area or the price node uh, that your fleet uh, lives in, typical congestion sources along with grid information. Then you wanted to take that, save that as a workbook, and then throw it up on a display somewhere in your office. Uh, or perhaps you are interested in ancillary prices and ancillary prices, and then you pull up uh, the ancillary prices from our PNR forecast. You overlay that with the actual dispatch, the prices, the grid conditions, all of the forward-looking information. It's really just however you like, or maybe you like me are watching uh, point to point actualize in real time. You can make a, uh, an entire display devoted to tracking uh, particular paths of interest. So with that, I wanted to leave a little time here to take questions, but first I wanted to let you know that we're not nearly finished with Mosaic. We have many ideas in the works. And so expect to hear from us with another integration webinar here in the near future. And as a shout out to our clients, we really can't do this without you. Your input, your guidance, your curation of our efforts in this product has been about invaluable. And we truly think we have something unique and special here in Mosaic. And we're excited where we're going. As a few final notes, these integrations with the LNR forecast and the ISO data are currently only available in ERCOT. Once we, uh, but we expect to roll out the other ISOs here soon as the year progresses. And with that, I will take any questions. Thank you for your time.